Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Comic Book Geezers. I'm your host, Pete, and my co-host... I'm Wild Bill, the Unknown Comic. How are you again? And today, we're going to do a special episode of The Silver Surfer. Yes, yes. Uh, one of our favorite characters, and he's uh, he's been around in Marvel since 1966. First appeared in Fantastic Four number six, uh, four, sorry, 48, and Bill's actually got a reprint. Neither one of us own number 48. This is a These reprint. are reprints of the Fantastic Four, but... Um... This cover is uh, by John Bushima and Joe Sinnott, uh, but uh, they used to reprint the Fantastic Four issues in the early 70s, and I recently acquired this for a buck, and uh, if you're a Silver Surfer fan, how could you go wrong with this cover? Yeah. In, yeah. Inside, drawn by Jack Kirby, of course, written by Stan Lee. Stan Lee. Yep. So, we're going to bring you the story of the Silver Surfer. His name was Norm Rad, and he lived on a planet called Zen La. And that planet was about to be devoured by Galactus. And Norrin Rad approached Galactus, actually defied him, and said, uh, if you sacrifice, uh, to, to spare my planet, not to sacrifice, excuse me, if you spare my planet, you know, I'll be your helmsman searching the, plan the galaxies for planets for you to devour if you spare my planet. And it's kind of like making a deal with the devil. Yeah. And Galactus took on that bet and bestowed some of his power to the Silver Surfer. And he was human, like in human form. And uh, he became encoded with his silver skin. Uh, this is another example of the Silver Surfer. He first appeared in the Fantastic Four, but this issue is a little bit later after he had his own series. So he would scour the galaxies on the surfboard and he could go anywhere in the universe. And he came upon Earth and that's he, he met the Fantastic Four. And they thought he was a threat. But uh, after a little discussion, uh, he realized that Earth was a planet worth saving. And he didn't want Galactus to find out about Earth. And so he defied Galactus. Yep. And Galactus got pissed. And what he did was he imprisoned the Silver Surfer to stay only within the orbit of Earth. So that was his punishment. Yeah, you can surf the universe, but not anymore. You can just stay around Earth since you love it so much. But they was able to spare Earth, and but he's punished, and he cannot break this barrier. And there are many, many issues where the Silver Surfer is trying to constantly yeah. break the barrier to freedom, but it never happens. And he had a, a, his long-lost love, Shalabal, was on his uh, old planet, so he really, could, he really couldn't see her anymore. So here you have these two like kind of star-crossed lovers that basically that you know they were two destined. different worlds. Yeah. And he had had he not defied Galactus, he'd have been able to go back to that planet and see her at any time. But uh, it's all over me. now. So the interesting thing about this whole story is that, you know, the Silver Surfer got to a point where he really started to care about the human race and felt, you know, a little bit of... Uh, he was compelled. Compelled to protect them. But the human race did not really take to him. They were like... He was an they outcast. Were, they were afraid of him. Yeah. So he was constantly... And when we get... You know, start talking about the actual Silver Surfer comic, which ran 18 issues... Every issue is about how the human race is just always like, you know, rebelling, hateful, hateful and fearful. Yeah, and he's, meanwhile, he's just trying and he's to He's wondering why, you know, I think it's the Silver Surfer. Go ahead, show them this is issue number one. And basically, I think this is Stan Lee's version of a character that questions man and all the stupidity of man. Why do you fight each other? Why do you have war? Right. Why do you have hatred? Why don't you have enough peace? You always that, talk that about your wanting... conscience, right? Yes. It's always like you're always talking about your peaceful beings, but yet you fight amongst yourselves and my and towards me. Hey, show them this one. Great cover, yeah. Great artwork, John Bushima, and a great great storyline. But unfortunately, I don't know why it only lasted 18 issues, which is kind of sad. But it's one of the most sought after comics by collectors today. So here he is fighting Mephisto, and Pete has all 18 of them. I just completed my run. Unbelievable. I only have two of them. I have issue 15 and 18. So here, here is a much sought after book. Yes. Number four, where he's fighting Thor. You'll see I got the shirt right here. Um, <laughs> this is a great one. It, it, this is, it, you know, Bill and I have talked about this before, but this is one of the most iconic cover arts ever. Of all time for Marvel yeah. Comics. Yeah, I mean, just look at the, these two titans getting ready to do battle. And as we mentioned before, and speaking two, of of titans, the most, go ahead, two, two of the most powerful Marvel superheroes ever. Yes, and the third one is the Hulk. Yep, but that is that's a great cover. That's classic material right there. And number five again, 
Just Let me get some glare here, huh? Yeah. There you go. I mean, just the look, you know, classic villain there. Uh, this one looks cool. Yeah, number six. <laughs> number six. And again, you'll notice these are all 25 cents. So these these books, this were series double started size in for, yeah. for so, a 15 cent comic at the time. These are these are double. Yeah. These are like what, 48 pages, I'm yeah, guessing, because an average yeah. one was about 32. Yep, yep. So this is definitely cool. Yeah. Look at that. The Heir of Frankenstein. Okay, pretty neat. Uh, so this one's one I like. So now, now we go back to 15 cents. So now they, they decided to cut this back down to a normal size. And that's okay. awesome. I mean, they're just classic covers. That's number nine. And number 10. This and and another thing about his surfboard is it always comes back to him like a, like a boomerang. Yep. So if he gets separated from it, if he gets knocked off his board, it'll come back. And his power is called the the power cosmic. Power cosmic, yes. Yep. Which uh, he can regulate, and it, it's intensity. Shallow bow there. And there's his girl. Yep. She doesn't Obviously, look too not, good. not a happy ending in that one. She's not in good spirits there. All right, so for your Hulk fans, here's a treat. This yes. one, this one's really cool. One of my favorites of the whole run. Uh, fighting the Abomination, who's probably one of the most strongest villains in Marvel the Universe. Yes, you know, a Hulk villain. But I mean, you know, you can. It's you know, you got Galactus and Thanos and what have you. But as far as like brute strength villains, I think uh, the Abomination Abomination's is up there. Here he's going against the Doomsday Man. This is number what, 12, 13. Okay. Okay. And now, now we got some. This is one I've always coming. wanted to get. This one is. A key for me because I'm such a Spider-Man fan. <laughs> so Spider-Man against the Silver Surfer. I haven't read it yet, but I'm going to guess it ends in a tie. Probably. <laughs> and again, you know, at, like Marvel with the Thor fashion. one, it's the two of them coming at each other. And we're going to see this again in the next issue where he goes against the one Sil of the Fantastic the, Four. The Human, the Torch, Human Torch. Right? So there, you know, again. This, this story is something where the Fantastic... Uh, Johnny Storm, the Human Torch of the Fantastic Four is going after somebody and the silver surfer is trying to protect the villain that Johnny Storm is going after. So this is kind of a twist of fate about yes, he's the superhero, the both superheroes, but kind of Johnny Storm is like out for vengeance kind of thing and he doesn't want to be interfered with and the silver surfer is doing everything to protect this villain from the vengeance of the Human Torch, so thus we have this conflict of interest here. Plus, the Surfer and the Fantastic Four have always kind of had this contentious relationship anyway, that at times they were at odds, at times they worked together, but... This time they're going against each other. Yeah. Definitely a good uh, clash for confrontation. So for number 16, we've got Mephisto again. Uh, just a classic villain. Mephisto's fought all everybody from the Surfer to Fantastic Four to X -Men. Thor. X-Men. Yeah, he's just, you know... He's, he's been he's, around. He's a big-time villain. <laughs> Uh, okay, here we got uh, Another against great, Nick Fury and Agents of Shield. A great right. cover again. Yeah, you know, he dominates the the page. Yep, you got it's, the Shield guys in the bottom. There's Mister Fury. Definitely cool. And then for the last one, number eighteen, uh, against the Inhumans. Yes. And this will be the only issue in the run where Jack Kirby actually took over the uh, pencils for the first time since his days in the Fantastic Four. So kind of an interesting way to end this 18-issue run with the guy who actually created the character in, to begin with. Yeah, it's kind of like a, a signature farewell yeah. kind of thing, which was nice. So like Bill mentioned before, it's really weird how this book, when it was originally on the newsstand, just never really clicked and really got popular because they canceled it due to lack of sales but since after they canceled it fans he, wanted more and more of the surfer he right? never went away he never went away he would show up everywhere for years and different different comics um for example um what's that year say that is 1980 so 1980 he comes into the 250th issue anniversary issue of the incredible hulk <laughs> again like a decade later decade after this Basically, yeah, a little bit more, right? Because yeah. that ended in what, 1970 or 70, 1970, 70, yeah. maybe 70. So, about 10 years. So, this is uh, here he is, and he had made other appearances throughout other titles prior to this. And now, before you put that away, those two, these two have a history, right? Because they both were a member of the early version of the Defenders. So, remember, the Defenders, when the Defenders first started, it was the Hulk, Submariner, Silver Surfer, and Doctor Strange. And then 
A couple years later, 1982, back by popular demand, <laughs> Volume 2, issue number one Can't of the Silver Surfer. Down. And uh, I love this cover, That's a, a recent one. acquisition of mine. I just picked this up about a month and a half ago. And when I saw this, I was like, this is a number one. What, what year did you say that was again? This is 1982. Okay, all right. Yeah. And it's uh, John, Stan Lee John and Byrne. John Byrne, one yeah. of the famous X-Men artists. Yep. And a uh, great story. And then, later on, That's probably about 1987, came out with uh, oh, what's that? Same up front? No, 93? Did I say 93? 93. Yes, yes this is 93. Resurrection, Silver Surfer with Warlock and Jax, right? That's Jax over sure, here. Drax the Destroyer. Drax, right? that's it. Moon Dragon down below. And what's that little, the little, uh, the little troll guy who used to hang around with Adam Warlock? I forget his name. That's him oh, right I don't there. I'm know. not sure who that. This might be. Uh, what's her face from the Guardians of the Galaxy? If okay. I'm not mistaken. But, but look at that star power on Drax there. Drax was always a main villain against the Cap Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, yes. So. This is an issue number one. When I saw this, because I'm a surfer fan, I picked this up in the, in the 90s. Such a great cover. I, I would love to read that someday. That's pretty uh, cool. Silver Surfer Volume 3. This is issue number 50. And, and it at, has like a, it's got, it's a foil. See that silver foil? Yeah. With Thanos. Look at that. So the letters are silver foil and the surfer is silver foil. I think this is 1991. That's I'm a mistaken. clash of the titans right there. This, boy. this you can see on eBay. This goes for a few bucks. Oh, but I love sure that does. metallic foil look of it. And I bought two issues of this because it, because it was yeah, the 50th not? anniversary issue. This is volume three. But then I didn't really buy any more. Then I bought issue 75 of volume three. And this is from 1993, I believe. What does that say down there? 19, 1992, sorry. But again, it's a foil cover. And they didn't do this for the other issues. But because it was a foil cover, they started doing that in the 90s. This also has like a rainbow metallic to it. Yeah. I don't know if it's coming through. I'm trying to show you. But definitely that kind of hologram, rainbow hologram with the silver foil was something I had never seen before. So I was like, this looks cool. I'll yeah, buy it. It's worth having you. Yeah. And then yeah, they make annuals. One. This is from 1989. This is uh, issue number two, the second annual uh, from volume three. I believe, of uh, the Silver Surfer. And this is a, a great cover, great story. That's part of that whole Atlantis Attacks uh, story. Yeah, and this is a 64-page giant, which is a great, great read. And he basically goes against this villain here, uh, the, Devi the Deviant. And uh, great story for the Silver Surfer. Great character. So that pretty much wraps up our comic books for... Uh, Silver Surfer. Silver Surfer, gang. I'm yeah. Wild Bill saying thanks for watching us with Comic Book Geezers. Come back and watch us again. Uh, the next guy we're going to do is probably Superman. Yep, yeah, we got Superman coming up. We got uh, Namor the Submariner finally, and we got Justice League. Yeah. Justice League of America. But we're also working towards that Fantastic Four show we've been talking about for a million years. and uh, That's probably going to take like three episodes because we have so many books on yeah, it. You know? Yeah. Why not? And we're uh, get, we, we got Comic Cons we're going to in the next couple of months, so we're probably going to do we some, got more some live homework, guys. Yeah, we got some. And we appreciate your feedback and all your hits and all your views. So keep coming back for more comic books if you love comics. I'm Wild Bill saying thanks for being here. And I'm Pete. We'll see you next time, guys. Be good. Okay, take Bye. care.